what were your first jobs? It was a sitcom. Uh, it was oh. down the shore. It was in the early days of Fox. Do you remember that? I remember that. I love it. I'm, yes. Well, it, it was, um, it, I was in Chicago, and I was uh, scrubbing floors and toilets and in a, a very, very hot summer and auditioning for everything that I could. And I was doing theater, but I was in between shows. And so um, the only job that I could, I was a terrible waitress, so the only job I could get that would allow me to go and do auditions during the day was with a company called Mary Mates. Um, so it was, uh, she, she, the, the boss very nicely let me go during the day because we worked in, in pairs. And so I went off and videotaped the audition for that. Um, and I, I got flown out and tested and, and got it and moved out to LA. I mean, the first, I think, on camera was a secret deodorant commercial yeah. that I got. That, like, I'm not going to lie, I went out, had a glass of champagne. It was like my big gig. And I remember in the shower uh, before I went to work that day, I must have said, strong enough for a man, but made for a woman 20 different times, 20 different ways. Awesome. I was like, how could I make that different? I mean, we've been saying that for years, you know. Uh, but it was one of those, that was really kind of my first, um, my first commercial. That, and I remember just getting that check and thinking, oh, my God, I can pay some college loans, you know. Um, so that was my very first experience, but it didn't really make me feel like an actor. <laughs> um, mine was some sort of dodgy historical educational program in, in Britain. <laughs> Why was it dodgy? Because it was so cheap. Even there, even like being my first job, I remember thinking, really? You know, I had to kind of, they didn't have wigs, so they would sort of be like, That'll do. And there was like a bit of old wall, and I remember kind of just scratching my head for like a week. Is this is this it? And uh, it's got a little bit better. You have great wigs on your show now. <laughs> yes. Non itchy wigs. I. Um, the first thing I ever got to do on camera was an MCI commercial, which was super fun. But the first like job I got to keep doing was uh, Another World. I've been doing theater forever, oh, and so it was the first time I'd been on camera. And they would, I was in New York, and they would pick us up in these town cars. You'd like get assigned a corner, and you'd go to that corner and wait for a town car to come and pick you up, and they'd drive you out to Coney Island. And like a bunch of you together, one like it wasn't fancy, <laughs> um, but it was a ball. And then we get there and. They were trying to launch a medical drama out of another world at that time because ER had just started, and it was so low budget. <laughs> and so we'd like do fake surgeries and learn our lines in our little rooms, and I just it felt like a dream. I loved it. Um, would you guys be willing to share with us your worst audition experience? <laughs> if you, yeah, I will. Um, there's so many. I know there's so many. It is so hard, but it, it, you're, you're right. I mean, it's. It, you learn that it's a skill. It's, the, it's like a thing you do to get a job, and it's so different from what you do when you actually get there. But I do remember uh, having an audition a few years ago and getting to the end of doing my thing and the director saying, okay, try it again. This time, try. <laughs> and it was oh, like, <gasps> wow. oh, oh, wow. okay. Wow. Um, so that was pretty bad. I do remember one. I had just finished a, a TV series called Kevin Hill that I was doing with Tay Diggs. And I came back, and he immediately had a new show. And I was being brought in to audition for a small role on his show. I had just played his co-star, a much larger role. And I was going in for maybe like one or two lines on the show. And I walked in, and I was so sort of humiliated and, and, and flustered, and I just started sweating and my jaw was like trembling and I could hear my teeth rattling and I kind of had a little meltdown and I had to yeah. just be like, you know what, I, good day. <laughs> this, is not, this is not gonna happen. Thank you for having me in the room for a moment and I just got out of there and I kind of went home and was sort of overwhelmed with sort of how my job had been taken away so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I think it probably was auditioning for a play in New York and um, the actor I was auditioning with who had the starring role, who shall re remain nameless. Um, That's camera. really easy to look while, up. Uh, <laughs> while we're on camera. Yeah. You're a smart girl. Um, 
he said, all right, so I want you to, I he was very intense, and he said, now, I want you to just be with me. I want you to just look at me. <laughs> we're two actors alone together. We're not, we're not actors. We're just being and breathing and existing, and we're here, and if I catch you acting, I am going to slap you. Oh my what? And I went, is there anybody in the room? Is anybody, is there anybody outside is there the really room? just two of us right now? Yeah. Here? Am I in, am I, is Ashton Kutcher going to show up? Am I being punked? And it was just his way of doing things. And I had been warned about it. So I went, uh-huh. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Um, but it was, it was intense and scary and Tell bizarre. me you did not get slapped. I did not get slapped. Okay. So there you go. Okay. I just was terrified. So... I think uh, he just saw sheer terror mm. and perhaps took pity on me and then did not slap me. I think he might have been feeding on the terror. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was just a whole, that was the whole power trippy thing. And so, the yeah. audition process, I think, is so interesting. I'm constantly fascinated by it because I, I like the idea of kind of going in and sort of knowing that I've earned the part mm -hmm. and that they, yes. they've mm -hmm. offered it to me. So that, that way when I know, when I turn up to set, I go, okay, I know that they've liked the creative choices that I've made and, and, and I, they want me to be there, right? I have a lot of fear. You know, it's a real pleasure and it's a real coup to be offered something and sort of you accept it and that's like another part of you going, okay, I've reached a particular level, you know, in, in your career. You've maintained a certain level of success, and, which is really nice. But I have this constant fear of whenever that happens and I, and I turn up to set, on that first day, by God, I and I and I and I start. I'm like, they're gonna at the end of the day, they're gonna fire me. They're gonna go. You know what? We thought she could do it, but she she can't do it. And so there's that constant fear of you know of of, of knowing that you know at least if you audition, mm -hmm. you know they gave it to you for a reason. One of the most useful things for an actor is to get to be in a room where other people are auditioning. I don't know if you guys ever had that opportunity, wow. but like early on, I remember just getting like a job job to read opposite actors who were auditioning and oh, I wow. and they were all guys that I knew and I watched like one after the other come in and do their thing and it was you realize it's not at a certain level everyone's talented yeah. it's just someone's right for it or they're not yeah. and it just took so much of the fear out mm. of it for me you guys are all on shows with amazing ensembles, fantastic chemistry. Uh, what's the secret to that great chemistry, and who's your favorite scene partner? Brian Cranston. Mm. I mean, they're all. I, I think everybody on that show was so incredible, um, and I loved every scene partner that I had. I mean, when when I finally got a scene with Aaron Paul again towards the end of the of the run, I was going yay, yay, because it had been years since we had had a scene together, so that was terrific. But Brian was just, it was, I always said it was like playing tennis with somebody who's better, makes your game better, because he would hit the ball across the net in a different way, and it was unexpected, and he'd lob it when I wasn't expecting it, and I would hit it back, and it always felt like this very fluid, trusting thing between us. And um, we would start in the morning in the makeup trailer just running lines and both of us just had this excitement every day and he brought that from the very beginning as the as the cast leader he just loves working and brings that to every single day i never saw his energy flag over those six years and five seasons but six years and he had such a load to handle and i couldn't believe it um and so he really led the way for the cast and the crew, and I felt like it rubbed off on everybody so that everybody, down to every single person on the crew, came to work. It didn't feel like we were punching a time card. Nobody felt that way. It was like, we get to do this. You know, we get to be part of telling this story. And so um, he could drop into a scene and scare the hell out of me and make me cry and do all those things to me, and then they'd say, cut, and then he'd sort of punch me in the arm and start joking around with me, and it was, it was pure joy. You know, when you asked that, I, I settled on one, and then I changed it, and then I changed it, and I changed it in my head. I, I think, um, obviously, the people that you have scenes with the most tend to come up. I think about Elizabeth Moss. I think about John Slattery. 
those are two actors that whenever I'm in a scene with them, I forget I'm in a scene. Mm. It's like that, that feeling that you're always striving for as an actor to walk away from the scene and, and be like, oh, I, I, was, I was there, you know? And I always feel that way with them. They're, they're so giving and, and extraordinary. I was doing a scene with John last night and he was just this close to me and I was looking in his eyes and I, it was just like a perfect, it was a perfect acting moment for me. You know, it just felt so good to be there with him. But then I think, you know, scenes with John Hamm and all these, just all these people, uh, I, I'm very lucky that the cast of Mad Men is pretty extraordinary. So I like all of them. I can't choose. Michelle, I, I hate to ask you to choose between Woody Harrelson know, and Matthew don't McConaughey. Me do that. <laughs> don't make me I have to be totally diplomatic. You know, it's, it, it is, I, they're both outstanding, both, you know, um, I mean, they're both extraordinary actors, and we were handed some of the best writing that I've ever had the pleasure of being able to to read, to, to utter these words. Uh, and they're both so good. I think I was really fortunate. Uh, my, my character uh, was somebody who was very kind of intrigued by um, Matthew's character, which was really lucky for me, because I remember when I started working with him, uh, as the characters, I, I was sincerely like intrigued. Like I had to like pull myself out of my head because I was watching him work, and I was blown away. And I was like, okay, like get a grip. Like he's doing something really, really magical right now. Let's just like be in the present with him. But it was, it was really special um, being able to feed off that energy. There's a couple of dinner party scenes that all of us got to work together. And that was really just so fun because the material was great, but also because the two of them are really great mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was just great to be witness to their chemistry together. And, uh, and then just tonally how we were all, all, all on the same page. And you know that's a testament to the writing as well as the direction. Mm -hmm. But they're both just great, great actors. And well, I, you know, our cast is getting huge. Um, and every year it changes, you know. So a couple of seasons ago, I got to work a lot with Pete Dinklage, who I've known for a long time. Oh, and awesome. yeah, <laughs> and we're we're kind of like family, and there's a sort of unspoken trust with him that I don't, it, you know. There's that thing that I struggle with, which is fear, and I try and put it in the right place where it can be useful as an actor. You know what I mean? I'm never ever like I got this. I'm always like. Shh. <laughs> so I try and put it somewhere mm -hmm. where it's helpful. And um, working with somebody like Pete, who I've known, there's this insane amount of trust. And uh, like, if you go somewhere, they'll go with you. Mm. They're not going to be like, what was that? They're just like, I'm there. And it's unspoken. And it's exciting. You know, it's like that thing you're saying when you lose mm -hmm. where you are and your reality. And then you come out and you're like, that was either really good or shit. <laughs> because I don't know where I went. So, but you know, our whole cast is like that. I've known a lot of them for a long time. And everybody brings different energy. Like Charles Dance is sort of terrifying and thrilling to act with. But you're always like, there's a little bit of that with him. And yet you're a bit like, actually, fuck you. I'm going to step up. <laughs> yeah. I think he likes that game. I... Um initially thought of Tony. Tony Golden plays my husband, and we spend a lot of time saying horrible things to each other. <laughs> and it, it's wonderful, because um, Tony is allergic to um, dishonesty. He just really, really is. Like, as a human being, he's the nicest, most decent, solid human. And, um, and he brings that into the room, so there's never... There's never, it never feels like any acting because he is completely in his truth. And he's also seeing his sort of bifurcated mind because he's seeing it all as a director and an actor at the same time. And so he has such incredible and reliable um, instincts. And it's so much fun to surf through because we get, we get nuanced writing. You know, we don't just have to be the, the wife or the girlfriend or whatever. We get to be complex flawed humans and so to to really go in all the nooks and crannies and know that somebody's got your back is incredible do you think your personal style has been influenced by playing joan on Mad Men? yes definitely i think i've just learned a lot about fit you know o over the years um janie bryan our costume designer 
pays so much attention to detail and and now when I walk into a fitting I'm like needs to be nipped here needs to be lifted here and the shoulder needs to go up this 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 and I, it's all because of the tailoring I've learned yeah. from Madman I walk in and I just know where everything goes now and I did not know that before <laughs> very tragically did not know that before so I've learned a lot about that Janie's really amazing about doing um, these people have a closet, so you don't yeah. see a new yeah. outfit each time. These people yeah. only have two, you know, yes. two or three dresses in their closet, and it's yeah. very realistic. But she'll wear it down in just the right yeah. amount of, she's just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> this is one that you can tell everyone. <laughs> what happens with your character next season? <laughs> God, I've been waiting Spill to tell. Beans. Exactly. <laughs> Which one's my camera? Uh, I don't know. How did I know? Oh, man, I'm so grateful that that is not, I am not in charge of that. So who, who, who knows? I wish I could tell you, but I'd be happy to see it. Go see. I don't know. I'm as excited as you are. <laughs> what was the hardest scene in the last season? Um, it was the scene where, uh, well, it was the, it was a scene where Walt takes baby Holly oh. and drives off with her. Um, and it was sort of that whole episode was really difficult. Um, but that was, I think, the most difficult moment because um, that baby was so darn cute in real life. And um, I just saw, you know, my own kids, and it was so easy to put myself into that situation, even though, it, even though, of course, I would not, I, hopefully, not good, I would never be in that actual situation. It, it was very easy to imagine just the, just the thought of your child disappearing, and all, that's all you have to really do. Um, and when Brian drove off down the street, um, Ryan Johnson directed that episode, and he's, he's such a brilliant director. And um, and he just said, "I just want you. Uh, uh, we're just gonna we're gonna track you. We're gonna have a dolly, and we're gonna track you running down the street. And then you can do whatever you want. This is your stop mark, and whatever you feel like doing, that's what you do down there." We did a um, couple takes, and we got it, and and that was it. But it was just that. Breaking through that mm -hmm. that thing, yeah, and you have a huge moment to do, and you're ready, and you know that you're prepped, and you're all ready to go, but then your body just suddenly says, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And you get really angry at yourself, and you have to find a way to unlock that and let it go. And I was happy that I was able to do that. Do you know when the next Game of Thrones novel is coming out? <laughs> I've got a few pages left to do. <laughs> the time to be honest. It's not George, it's me. Uh, no idea. Um, I think we all know the answer to this one. Uh, oh, I'd love to. Who would you cast in True Detective's second season? Oh. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh gosh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, you know, I think, wow, I'm just thinking of Nick's writing. You know, um, Joaquin Phoenix is such an amazing, Ooh, an amazing wow. actor. And it seems like that would be a really interesting fit with Nick Pizzolatto, the director, um, the way that he writes stylistically and... Um, I'll go um, for that. That would be, yeah, that would be quite cool. 